Hello, my name is Juho Onkatukia, and I'm working as an economist uh, with the National Institute for Health and Welfare in Helsinki, Finland. I'm going to be presenting a paper written jointly with a colleague of mine, Risto Vaittinen, who's a specialist in, in, in pension systems in Finland. Uh, the goal of our research is to integrate the micro level register data of uh, benefits, the recipients, and, uh, and healthcare uh, into the CG model of the Finnish economy that can be then used uh, to analyze various policy proposals that are in the works. The background or motivation for this um, research stems from from, from stem from um, the cost of, of, of a public um, healthcare system. As you probably know, in most of Nordic countries, uh, Finland included, healthcare and social care are mostly funded from the government coffers. And um, that means that, that uh, the future of it all is very much a, a policy issue. If you will, it's, it's actually a question of, of, of the Nordic welfare state model as well. Um, expenditure depends very heavily on, on the age structure of the population. And Finland, like most European countries, is becoming relatively older all the time. Um, it's forecast that the share of working age population, of Finnish population, is uh, drinking well into the 2030s, uh, which means that, that uh, few workers are going to be facing a growing bill from, from the health and social care system or the welfare state. Uh, present government is attempting to do something about this uh, to, to make the sector, care sectors more, effect, more cost effective and, and uh, to save some room uh, for the volume growth that, that, that is anticipated. Uh, unfortunately, at least four previous governments have been trying to do the same and uh, it, doesn't, uh, it hasn't been very successful, uh, but maybe it's the case that, that as, as the future is lying or the problems are lying closer at hand, this time the reform, reforms will actually, actually be seen through. So what we want to do in, in our study is, is to develop tools that, that, that can, uh, can be analyzed, uh, the effects of, of the policies and especially the, the implications uh, to uh, intergenerational uh, welfare distribution. Uh, the drivers of, of health expenditure and social expenditure as well, uh, basically the population, uh, it is forecast that, as I thought, that, that the aging, uh, the share of the elderly is in, in, in the increase. But then it's also the case that, that the unit, unit cost of, of treatments are higher for older people and younger people um, because they tend to need more intensive, more labor intensive, round the clock um, care uh, with many of the typical diseases that, 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 uh, that um, older people get. Um, this is at the core of our, our study. Um, the National Institute for Health and, and Welfare is the, is the um, official uh, that, that's in charge of, of these registers. So we know at the level of something like seven or eight hundred uh, different uh, treatments, what the costs have been, whom the treatment has been given, who did it, uh, and so on. So we'll be able to sort of uh, allocate very accurately uh, the, the costs of, of, of treatment in different uh, age groups, um, for genders and, and so on. Um, we try to update this register um, yearly. The last time it was fully updated was actually 2017, but, but um, the pictures that I'm now showing are, are from the 2015 15 version. We do the projections here uh, up to 2040 because it's based on the regional sort of uh, data. But uh, at the national level, we can actually go well into the 2070s, uh, and then that's something that we actually do the thing. Well, here's the big picture of, of uh, how the costs are, are 
distributed across X groups. Um, you can see that the, there's a marked rise in the unit cost per patient as, as people go older. Older uh, males tend to have the benefit of, 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 of a female companion in better shape than themselves when they are older. And that means that when females are getting sick, uh, it's often the case that they are they are elderly widows, meaning that 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 uh, the society sort of has to face the bill. Uh, but when they're treating their sick old husband, then it's actually uh, not borne by the society, at least not to the same same extent. But other than that, uh, the pattern is pretty clear. As you get older, you need more expensive uh, treatment. Uh, the share of, of Growing share of the elderly population is also um, seen in, in, for example, the old age dependency ratios, which are projected to grow from something like 35 percent to almost 50 percent by 2040. So um, you can see the urgency of, of uh, doing something about that. Here's a projection of, of the public health care um, expenditures might look like in 2040. The projection that we have is uh, that. that the total expenditure is, is growing by something like a third from 2015 to 2014. Uh, and only 6.8% percentage points of that is actually uh, due to population growth. And 25% and points of it is, is, is uh, due to expenditure per person rising. Uh, and that's explained by the aging of, of, of the average, average patient. Well, in the macroeconomic modeling, we are interested in things like this. Um, this is a picture of, of um, yearly growth rates of GDP. AWG uh, is Aging Working Group, which is a European sort of a joint effort uh, for determining fiscal uh, sustainability. For Finland, the AWG uh, GDP forecast is hovering between 1 and 1.4%. Uh, and as you can see, the health and social care volume growth is, is well above uh, GDP, projected GDP growth most of, of the next two decades. So what this implies is that, that the, the share of, of um, uh, peer costs is actually rising. Uh, our model, the CG model, is, is uh, called Finnish Finnish Applied General Equilibrium Model. It's been in use for something like 15 years now. For these purposes, what we're doing is that we're aggregating it into a level of, of commodities and industries, which is matching what we know from uh, household surveys. So we'll be able to sort of um, construct uh, uh, consumption baskets for each age cohort uh, and allocate the income from different industries to the accurate. Uh, the base data that we have is, goes to something like 200 industries, but, but for our purposes, that sort of disaggregation really is uh, Kind of beside the point because our approach and our, our focus here is more on the implications of, of, of intergenerational issues. We cover all the public um, care providers and also um, the central and municipal government, uh, governments uh, which are in charge of, of, of tax collection. So we get the fiscal, fiscal um, issues covered as well. Uh, population is by age, each cohort we treat as a sort of a neoclassical utility maximizer so that when something happens to income or relative prices, you, you get the usual responses to, to, to the consumption and, and, and so on. We are calibrating it to those AWG profit projections and, and then our own projections that have to do with the care sectors. And uh, with it, we'll be able to analyze whatever policies are, 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 are being implemented during this, this government, government seat uh, when, when they start reforming the care sector. Uh, so I'll stop with uh, just a picture of, of, of complete our analysis is we don't only cover the social and health care sectors, we also have all the other social benefits with, which are distributed, uh, basically income redistribution by the governments at, at, at the different levels. And then we also have uh, the pensions model. So altogether, the big problem that, that we want to tackle is that, that uh, according to our projections, the GDP share of, of all these uh, welfare state services and benefits is rising by almost four percentage points by 2040, unless something can be done with the effectiveness of it all. Thank you.